how's it going? Well, I just want to start this video first by saying that if you haven't seen The Social Dilemma, I highly recommend it. It's, it's a great little documentary slash has a little bit of cinematic stuff mixed into it. So um, that shows how negative social media is on society. It shows how much we are addicted to social media like we would be a drug. Uh, all of these uh, people getting dopamine hits from, you know, getting likes or reactions or whatnot, and it's, it's, it's just so addictive. And there's nothing in place to try to stop it from being addictive. And the more addictive it is, the more money uh, different companies make. So, and there's the way they harvest your data as well. And the way that they can pit people against each other. And as long as it gets more clicks on the right things, um, that's all that matters. You know, it, it actually encourages that type of thing. Just like mainstream media likes to pit the public against each other, likes to spread fear, likes to propagate fear. And we don't really have anything out there to, to regulate those things either. You know, we, we, we need to regulate social media. We need to regulate mainstream media. We, you know, the news. We need something, we need a stronger version of like the fairness doctrine. We need to be able to actually see multiple sides of any issue on the same networks. I was on Parler a little earlier and I, and I was just thinking about the fact that I'm on Parler at all. Some people might say, why are you on Parler? You're on the left. Why are you on Parler? And I'm like, well, I like to see what the right is up to. And if people are being censored off of uh, mainstream or, uh, you know, big tech platforms, they're going to congregate somewhere. And just because you don't see them on these big platforms doesn't mean that their mindsets don't exist. Oh, they're, 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 they're disappearing. It's just like, no, those, those things don't just disappear. You just shove them underground. That's, that's, that's what happens. It's what happens when you do the censorship. They, they go underground. And where they can ferment even more and become even more dangerous. That's what happens. So I like to see what the right is up to. So I go on sites like Parler. Even though the website is, though the layout is terrible, the, the, the functionality is terrible, the notifications are terrible, you don't even get to see the context for if someone's replied to something you've said, you don't even get to see the context of it, you don't know what it's attached to, none of that. Oh, it's, it, the notifications are terrible, you can't, there's very few things you can right click to open in a new tab. You know, if someone shared someone's post, what do they say, shouted? someone else's post and you want to go to their uh, their profile well you can't open that in a new tab so you if you you have to left click it and then if you click back it just takes you to the top of your feed again you, you lose your place right anyway enough about about that but there's a lot of bullshit that's brewing on the right at this time if you think it's polarized on the left you should see how polarized it is on the right you know, I mean, it's like anyone that's the left to the left of Biden is is considered a communist. Just like, you know, to the far left, uh, anyone to the right of Bernie is a fascist. So, yeah, you know, you know, it goes both ways. God, the amount that people are being pitted against each other. Pitted? Pit. Pit against each other. Yeah, people really are trying to force everyone onto cho into choosing a side. I don't really care how difficult it becomes to not choose a side. I'm, I'm not going to just side with something that there's so many bad things on each side. So much crap on both sides, you know? So I'm going to take from the good of both and try to make it my own. But it is difficult. But it's even more difficult to do if I'm not paying attention to what the right is up to. I mean, it seems the goal is to take away the ability for the right to even congregate in such ways. And everyone's saying, oh, it's, it's the right that we need to worry about. It's, it's the right, when they're, when they're violent, they're the ones that we need to worry about. And I'm like, we need to worry about both sides. Both sides are violent in different ways. We need to worry about extremists on both sides. 
It's just like every other issue. If you're pushing women's issues by shitting on men's issues, yeah, that's that sucks. If you're pushing for LGBT issues while shitting on, on straight people, yeah, that sucks. When thinking about how to, to deal with the problem, you've got to think about as many sides as possible. Otherwise, your solutions are going to be crap to a lot of people. Something else I want to mention, you know, and it might seem kind of random, but when I've, when I've talked about how humans react when they're cornered, you know, they lash out, this includes all sides. Are you actually doing any good if you're making an entire group feel cornered on any side? Any side. Are you actually doing any good when you're doing this? What is your goal? A mindset that I see coming from a number of people is this notion that if something is a right-wing source, that automatically makes it propaganda. Doesn't even matter if it's just slightly right. Nope, it's propaganda. That's what people will label it as. There are people who have had this assumption that if something is on the left, that it's more factual. I've heard some people say, reality has a left-wing bias. What do you say to those people? Now, look, there are some subjects where that could be true. I mean, when, when people believe in things like creationism, they believe in a number of things that are not scientifically backed, you know, because tradition or their religion says so, then, then yeah, on those subjects, those things, Things when it comes to reality, yeah, the reality has a left-wing bias about those specific subjects. But for things that are not using the scientific method, you can't claim that reality has a left-wing bias when it comes to those things. If the scientific method isn't being used, and you're, you're propping up the philosophies of very particular people, then no, you, your way of breaking apart the world may not be all that accurate. It may not have good results when you tr when you come up with conclusions based on those ways of looking at things. You know, the, the right wing may have some valid things to say about those those subjects. It's not to say that you go with the right all the way on those things. Take bits and pieces of the things that that seem to make the most sense from both sides. Take into consideration as many sides as you can and you'll probably have better solutions. But that's not happening right now. Nobody's listening to the other side. Like I said, you know, to, to those that are really on the left, anyone to the right of uh, Bernie Sanders is, is a fascist. And to the people on the right, anyone who's to the left of Biden is a communist. How do you reason with people like that? Well, you got you got a... a you got to join their echo chamber or you're an enemy. It's a bunch of crap. And there doesn't seem to be anything out there trying to bring us back to center a little bit. Like I've said earlier, I, I wish there were regulations on social media, on mainstream media, on big tech platforms, especially if they're going to call them platforms. If they're a platform, then they, they should act like a platform and not this hybrid between a, a platform and a publisher. How will we ever get any solutions when, when people aren't willing to listen to the other side? I guess I don't know what more to say. Thanks for watching. Ooh.